what's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars where today we're talking about The Boy and I am re-watching and re-reviewing this in preparation to see Brahms, The Boy 2, tomorrow. Now when it comes down to horror films in general, I've said it before, I will remind you again that the two subtypes of horror that I'm usually the biggest critic to is scary clowns and possessed dolls. I almost never love those kinds of movies and it's not impossible for me to like them, but it does mean that they have to try it that much harder to impress me because I have enjoyed those kind of movies in the past, but it is super, super rare. What about The Boy though? Is this an example of a possessed doll story that's good? Or is it just japing that kind of story? Let's get cracking. This review is brought to you by the word of the day, jape, to make a joke or mockery of something. The Boy is about an American nanny who is paid an impressive wage to look after a doll as if it were a real human child. At first she thinks it's easy money as she plans to mostly disregard the doll, but soon things rapidly go bump in the night that suggest to this woman that the doll may not just be a doll, it may in fact be real. It may in fact be alive. Right off the bat, I want to say that as far as possessed doll movies go, this is one of my favorites. Now, there's a few reasons as to why that is, and most of those reasons are unfortunately found in the spoiler territory. I try my hardest to avoid spoilers in my reviews. What I will say, however, is that if you're going to love or hate this movie, you'll know for sure by the third act. That seems to be the moment in the movie that either grabs people or annoys them the most. And that solely depends on your preferences as to how you want possessed doll movies to operate. Now, personally, I feel like the third act works incredibly well. I think every act in this movie works incredibly well. The balance and the pacing of this film is always escalating in a way that I love. And the third act represents a perfectly deserved culmination of events. The stakes are constantly raised. The things that go bump in the night slowly but surely get worse and worse as the film progresses. It honestly has a good sense of tension and apart from that it knows how to handle red herrings and foreshadowing really well. In general, from the very start, I was creeped out by this doll, and that is almost never the case with movies like this. That mostly has to do with the way that this film was shot, and the aforementioned elements that help the thrills in this film stick. Now when it comes down to negatives specifically, I didn't think there was many. There were moments that could have been done better. And there was definitely things that I would have changed. First, the individual importance of each character. That's basically nothing. You got a lot of flat characters that are basically just there to keep things moving, but they could have honestly been anybody. Plus, there are backstories to Lauren Cohen's character that don't seem to be super connected to anything else, and these stories get fleshed out for no apparent reason, which makes me feel like it was a longer movie than it ultimately was. I just didn't care about her past relationship issues. I mean, what's the point of that? Another issue that I had with this film was the narrative structure, which doesn't really have an introduction. Not really anyways, it mostly just starts on the inciting incident, where basically they cross a threshold and nothing will ever be the same again. That is, the movie starts with Lauren Cohen's character accepting a job at this house, but we really know nothing about her specifically, or about this family, or anything. They instead rely pretty heavily on a boatload of exposition later on the film to explain that stuff, and I just didn't think that was the best way to handle it. Let's take a look at that final score for a second. Now when it comes down to specifically comedy or horror, those are very bias specific genres. How I feel about one may differ from what you feel about it, and the same vice versa. So the bias score is almost always more important than the unbiased score for any given comedy or horror film. So keep that in mind. That being said, my unbiased score for The Boy is 62%, as it doesn't have many technical things that it does very well. My bias score, however, was 78% because, as I said, I was creeped out. I was enjoying myself, and I did really like that third act. This averages everything out to a final score of 70%, 70 out of 100 possible stars, granting the film with a letter grade of C-. Which, when it comes down to possessed doll films, that's not a bad score at all. At a time, this was my highest rated possessed doll film, but as the years have passed, and as I've seen more films in that subcategory, that has switched around a bit. Now, I'd like to hear your thoughts on The Boy in the comments down below. This is a love it or hate it film, so do you love it or do you hate it, and why? Let me know. As for YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button if you like this review and like to see some others like it. Hit the thumbs up button because that always helps out my channel, and don't forget about the little bell icon because that'll help notify you when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out.